Welcome back to the channel everyone. We're on the large greenhouse today. We've got about a 25 degree day outside. We actually have a heat wave going on. It's pretty nice to be outside after that Arctic blast of negative 50 to 60 degree wind chills blowing over this greenhouse. We're not used to that. Maybe negative 30 is about as low as it gets throughout the winter normally, but having that extra blast of cold and uh, negative 30 lower than what we're used to seeing. Our Jean Payne heating system really pulled us through and all of the stuff we've got going on, all our little solar systems, our geothermal there, and this little water system. We've got our water flowing off of this battery solar system. We've got some air pumping, basically the same fan running our geothermal, running out and into the greenhouse, blowing air in and catching some of it, blowing it up. I've been letting all of our beds breathe. I've been trying to get good oxygen flow to all of these plants and we had great success. Nothing really died on us. Stuff is a little wilted in a few spots. I've been harvesting a ton of food so it kind of looks bare on some of our kale and stuff there. But for the most part, this kale does not survive outside in the winter time nearly as long as like our regular kales will and our curly leaf kales and stuff. So. Being able to keep that alive, our dill is actually sprouting back up on us, so it didn't actually die. Purple tat soy here, you can see it's a little wilted back, and this bed was not insulated on the outside like our bed down on the southern side of the greenhouse was. We had insulated about a foot and a half down to hold extra heat and hold that Jean Payne heating. So being able to pull these tunnels up, let everything get some good sunlight to them, let them breathe. A beautiful tat soy plant there. And with our geothermal here, this is where our geothermal comes up. We've got about 50 feet of our black drain tile buried down underneath all the way to the other end of the greenhouse in that solar power blowing that through the ground and slowly heating up the air. Our Jean Payne heating kept us at about 45 to 50 degrees throughout that Arctic blast here, and the geothermal keeps it about 45 to 50 degrees also. So it was a win-win for us, and it was really successful. All of these crops that we planted, we've got lots of little sprouts. It's super hard to see crops sprouting up with this camera, but we've got lots of life coming up. Our leeks are still alive. We've got our sorrel popping back. I harvested a bunch of that. We've got our onions. Everything's still alive. So I wanted to take note of the geothermal. With all of that air blowing out into this bed and being covered up in here, we had nothing die in this bed, and this bed is not insulated like this one is. So everything stayed alive. I've been harvesting tons of food out of here. We've got all these rapini broccoli flying up, like really, really growing quickly for the winter time. So I thought to myself, if that geothermal is working so well with a cold hardy crop, I'm going to start sprouting with it. So I've got this geothermal tube and I had this basically rolled down. So this was all enclosed and the geothermal was blowing up and keeping about a 50 degree temperature on all of these crops. We've got broccoli, heading collards, purple tat soy, red Russian kale and some cabbage all sprouting very very well and sprouting them right in the greenhouse I don't have to harden them off or anything they're all just ready to go they don't get leggy they're ready to be transplanted and I've got tons that I can prick apart and split them out and just fill an entire bed so we're gonna have tons of food coming up just thanks to our geothermal and our Jean Payne heating too because this is in between both of our warmed lines we're putting about 60 70 degrees to the floor with our warm water here that was really not what I came out here to talk about I just wanted to give an update on that and kind of show how well our systems worked through that real real cold blast we had so coming down to the southern side I've got my solar air heater I've got my solar water heater and I've got a solar stone heater so I just built this and it is not really a build but you can see that it's pretty well sealed up I had a couple extra windows and a little bit of extra insulation over there so what I did is took some of my egg paint and I painted all, all of these bricks with our natural egg paint. We just use egg yolks and some biochar and I crushed it up really, really fine so I could get a nice coating on there. Because when you do not break your biochar up good enough, I can peel that off, it kinda gets real chunky and it doesn't like to stick as well and it doesn't go on as smooth. So I put this on nice and smooth and I just got this together probably about an hour ago so we can take some temps from there. We don't have a fully sunny day today. We're sitting about nine 
9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning here, and I noticed that we were gonna have a partially sunny morning, so I said, well, I'm gonna take advantage of that sun. I'm gonna throw this box together. I had painted these rocks the other day, just in order to get this in place. So I kind of dug this out and I really, really wanted to throw a bunch of extra heat onto this barrel. And we've got liquid water in the drum and we've been warming it up to maybe 50 degrees, 45, 50 degrees, about ambient temperature of the greenhouse on a fully cloudy day. So in the sun, we're not getting a whole lot of solar activity. I really didn't want to spray paint this barrel. I didn't want to egg paint it because I could see how well the egg paint worked. It's basically washing off the more condensation it gets it's just going to slowly peel it off and when you're using rocks that don't have any moisture in them it works very very well so egg paint works perfect for solar heat sinking or solar energy sinking that heat into these bricks and re-releasing it at nighttime. As I was saying, it's pretty darn early still. We don't have a whole lot of solar activity going on. The clouds are clouding up there, but I wanted to try and get a temp inside the box here. It's sitting maybe about 57. It's darn hard to get it past those blades up into the hole where the actual heat is coming out, about 57 degrees. Being able to throw double the outside temperature is about 25 outside we're throwing about 57 degrees so we're over double the temperatures for the outside temps i'm gonna jump over here and click our little water heater it's kind of jankily hooked together there so hopefully we get some water flow coming through there i don't have any build up or junk blocking it i want to kind of take a temp on the water here i'm right, starting to get a little water flow and there it comes flowing pretty decently now so we got a little sample of the water here and we're gonna check the temps there. About 81 degrees, 82, 81. Darn nice for having 25 degrees outside and this has only been sitting in the sun for maybe an hour now. So having 81, 82 degrees first thing in the morning is pretty darn cool. I can see steam rolling off of that thing. This thing has been totally awesome. I mean, it had a little condensation this morning because it sat with water in it all night. The only downfall to this system is having that condensation build up from having very cold water coming in. We've got maybe 40, 39 40 degree water coming in and we're putting almost 80 degrees out pretty well doubling the temp on that water there i want to see if this box gets any better temps coming out here so we've got a little better temps coming out showing 58 59 and about 59 degrees so these two little solar energy systems are really holding their weight in here and they're putting some good energy into the greenhouse energy that wouldn't normally be collected so we're doubling up the energy resources inside the greenhouse as opposed to having this box or this box outside the greenhouse the temperature starting would be much lower so having them be smaller and being able to collect that energy right into the greenhouse and this box warms up and we're not losing any energy there is no energy lost to the outside so whatever energy comes in and stores in the box stays inside the greenhouse so we've been experimenting with a lot of free heating systems this winter and the Jean Payne heating system is the number one factor that saved this greenhouse. All of these little free heating systems that we deal with with the sun, solar heating systems, they're only able to achieve good temperatures when we have solar activity. I mean, we have a little bit of activity and energy put in, even on a halfway cloudy day, there's a little bit of energy build in there, but not nearly what we get from a compost system. The compost doesn't rely on the sun to achieve heat, and our solar systems, we have large solar panels running smaller systems. So we're able to run those solar systems with not much energy input from the sun. Even on a completely overcast day where it's cloudy, raining, snowing, etc., we're able to purge those systems and our little fans seem to run 24 seven basically. They run quite a bit into the night, which is awesome for us. We are getting good temperatures from those and they're allowing us to grow all of this food without any energy input. We don't have any electricity in this greenhouse. So we don't have any bills for the greenhouse. We're not using any gas we're not using any fuel we're just using free compost heat now aside from the jean Payne heater like i was saying we've got 
both of these little air and water heaters and they are amazing when we've got at least a partly cloudy day and one tip for everybody is that you want to have these systems at least to a 45 to 60 degree angle at the southern sun so in the winter time the sun is obviously a lot lower so you want to have all of these angled appropriately to be able to achieve those good temperatures otherwise if you're not at a good enough angle it is going to bounce and reflect more energy than it is going to absorb inside of your box so i was thinking about how i could use these recycled windows right now without building any more boxes or taking up a whole lot of space and since i already had this 55 gallon drum that i pumped the water from one tank to the other to fill this up i figured that i would try and use these windows the best i could to store a lot of energy into this tank because that water is going to hold all of that energy throughout the night and re-release it into the floor and into the air and into this part of our bed here when the hoops are down so i ran around the greenhouse and picked up all of the pavers that i wasn't using for a purpose and basically took them outside yesterday egg painted them up and I'm just going to store as much solar energy into them as possible. So I've showed in our videos before the difference between light and dark and heat and energy absorption. So if you've got a paver that is not painted dark color and you have a paver that is painted dark color, two exact same pavers, you're going to hold at least 15 to 20 degrees more energy in that paver that is a darker color and that's just simple science that's all basic stuff but sometimes you really don't think about it like that but when you're using it for actually storing the energy and heat it makes all of the difference in the world i can feel the heat from that sun actually warming up this end of the greenhouse so that's why we have all of these projects down on this side as opposed to the other side because this is the sunnier side of the greenhouse obviously and we've got all of our heat blowing in from our compost down there so we're holding at least 50 to 60 degrees on the other side of the greenhouse almost constantly because of that constant heat blowing from our compost so i really had to figure out a way to bank some energy down here so i wanted to figure out a way to store the energy on this side of the greenhouse and water is the way to do it and we're putting a little bit of warm air out and slowly warming that tank up and we're going to be warming this tank up so we're basically protected everything inside and all the way down to the other side of the greenhouse nothing is dying on us because we've got all of this thermal mass energy releasing heat at nighttime so the basics of growing and achieving growing temperatures in winter boil down to insulation and heat so if you're not going to heat your greenhouse you have to have super super good insulation factor so being that we have a diy hoop house greenhouse we doubled our layers and we've got both we've got heat coming in we've got all of this free energy energy running and we've got insulation factors we've got a good six to eight inch gap of air dead air between both layers and that really really saved our butt this winter when that polar vortex came through so trying to extract as much heat on this southern side of the greenhouse and carry it into the night is another main factor so it could be sunny and this whole side will warm up yes in the sun but when we're going into those really cold nights we want as much energy buffering between the door and this least insulation side of the greenhouse when there is no sun shining through so using all of this thermal mass is basically creating a buffer so this whole zone right here is a buffer to our outside this door and this least insulated side of the greenhouse we have double layers but it's not as thick of a double layer as the actual whole outside of the greenhouse and the other end of the greenhouse is pretty well insulated we've got stuff up on the back wall on the outside and we've got good insulation factors down there this is the main side for concern at nighttime we have temperatures seeping through a door that's not 100 percent sealed all the time and we're able to stave off those freezing temperatures from seeping in through the floor or through the walls by having a good thermal mass on this side of the greenhouse now when you're using bricks and pavers and rocks and stuff as a thermal mass i like to think of it like water and it doesn't really hold a negative draw as bad as water does on a cloudy cold day but the energy input is a lot more than trying to heat air so when you're trying to heat water it requires the most when you're trying to heat bricks it requires the medium and then heating air is the easiest to do with solar activity so let's check this out everything is free this little solar fan i've had maybe 10 of these things they were very very cheap so i picked up a ton of them because i can always find uses for them so that little five watt solar panel 
is running this little five watt solar fan. I can feel warm air coming out of there already. Let's see what kind of temps we got coming through here. All right, so these bricks were about 40 degrees a little while ago, and now we're putting about 56 degrees into this little box, 55 degrees. So that is not terrible, it's not great. So 55, 56 degrees isn't the best, but these bricks were sitting outside. So they were about 20 degrees when I started this morning. So I put them in here maybe an hour and a half ago now and built this box, got everything kind of situated. Didn't really require a whole lot of building. I kind of just dug it out, but I got a nice seal on this side. The dirt is blocking the other side over here. You can see right through there. The dirt is blocking the other side, holding that nice little piece of hard solid insulation so the top of the box is open and it's not a perfect seal but this fan is extracting all of the heat that rises up to the top and all of these bricks are going to hold that energy much longer into the night and all of the energy they're releasing is going to be released right into this 55 gallon drum so we're basically using these like heaters the sun is going to basically shine in heat them up and transfer that energy right into the water and the whole purpose of this is to get more energy into our actual tank here so everything is just shining right through and warming this tank up so i gave it about another half an hour in the sun i threw that little thermometer in there it's quite hard to see it's shining about 58 59 almost 60 degrees in that little thermometer so we're really really warming those bricks up and coming from like 20 to 25 degree bricks a couple hours ago this is going to be an awesome free source of heat in the greenhouse we're going to be able to passively blow all of that extra heat that would just naturally roll off and rise up we're going to be able to spread it out a bit with this little solar fan running so picking up all of those free Free windows all the time is not as crazy as it looks this is a great great way to passively and freely throw some energy into the greenhouse more energy than I had coming in because instead of painting this I was able to just paint the bricks and then I'll be able to reuse those over and over again and we're going to get a lot more energy pushed into our water by simply throwing some windows and kind of sealing it up so if anybody's got any ideas comments questions concerns drop it in the comments below I'd love to hear everybody's feedback and I'm probably going to rework this box a little bit because of all these gaps up top here but it seems to be working very well the temps already came up it's sitting 60 60 one now after a few minutes so it's definitely rising it's doing what I wanted it to and the only thing I may do is kind of seal the box a little better I have a whole bunch of pieces of strips and offcuts of my rigid foam insulation so I can basically build a cap for the box that I can set the window on I didn't want to use rigid foam for the top because it's blocking so much energy I'm still passively transferring energy through the top of this box into the actual tank itself but we're cycling so much more energy by having these bricks down here also even if they're blocking the sunlight directly to it they're absorbing much more energy being black than this blue tank